Where to shoot a deer? There are so many variables and so many answers to this question, and, I, and I've, I've gotten this question a lot uh, over my career. And the thoughts that I probably shared 20 years ago versus the thoughts that I have now are vastly different because I believe, number one, I've learned I don't know near as much as I think I did, and I'm always learning. I have tracked so many deer over my lifetime now that I'm shocked at what I really think happened when we look at where a deer was hit. And it doesn't matter whether it's a high powered rifle, a crossbow, a compound bow, a handgun, a muzzle loader, uh, all the way down to air guns. I've seen them shot with so many different legal means and methods that where to aim to hit a deer really is something based on the moment, based on your competency, and based on what you're hunting with. I've, I've gotten Facebook messages and comments where we've posted a guy shooting his very first deer and a guy thinking, why would you wait that long to take that shot? You should have shot him here, here, and here. This is a first time hunter. This is a guy who's never shot a deer. We've probably coached this guy about trying to get that deer as broadside as much as you can, taking out both lungs, taking out that shoulder. And this is a guy who's made the decision he wants to do it as right as he possibly can. And I'm all for that. The reason being, you want that experience to be great for that hunter so that he is satisfied and makes a great shot with him. Flip that script around and you take a guy that's hunted all of his life and he is an expert with whatever means and methods there, the angles that he's going to take and the processing of that information is going to be uniquely different than a first time hunter. The guy that's hunted a lot, he's cleaned a lot of deer, he's seen mistakes, he understands what his, his weapon of choice is, can do he's going to know that there's different angles. He's going to know what's going to happen if he shoots it straight on at him. He's going to know what the quartering away, quartering two type shots are going to provide options and, and not options in there. But there are certainly some rules of thumb. Obviously the best one is if you can get this animal perfectly broadside, the shoulder that is closest to you is slightly forward, really exposing all the vitals and you're trying to punch that projectile, whether it's your arrow, whether it's your bullet, right in behind that shoulder, a couple of inches up from, from the white line into that other shoulder, you're going to take out everything that's pumping. You're taking the lungs out a little bit. You're going to probably clip that heart and you're going to find that animal either right there or within a hundred yards. That rarely happens that they ever stand that perfectly broadside. So you're going to have quartered away, quartering two shots. You're going to have a deer stepping it a little bit. You're going to have that leg back. Each one of those now slightly changes that aiming point, but you can never go wrong just getting it behind that shoulder that is on your side and trying to get your arrow, trying to get your bullet into that opposite side of the shoulder on the other side. If you're shooting a high powered rifle, chances are you're gonna break everything down. If you're shooting an arrow, you're gonna blow through everything right there with today's modern arrows, the crossbows. You're gonna get in there with your broad head, you're gonna clean things up, you're gonna tear things up and you're gonna have a good blood trail out the other side. Now where things start to really get intriguing are some of those really quartering away shots, really quartering towards you, the straight on shots. I mean, some of those shots really for people that are not what I would call experts and comfortable with whatever they're shooting, I don't even really recommend them. Give that deer a chance to move, to turn a little bit, and chances are you're gonna be rewarded with a shot that's gonna help cleanly, quickly, and humanely disperse of that animal, take that animal down. You're not gonna have long tracks in those situations, even though long tracks are gonna happen, even with the best shot at times. But if you're patient and wait for the right opportunity, you've got a better chance to recover that animal every time. Where I think things can start to get a little dicey in deer hunting, and I'm not saying don't take this shot, it's up to you. You're the hunter, you're the person that's, you know, drawing the bow back, pulling the trigger, taking the safety off, it's, it's your hunt. But where I think things can start to get dicey, and I've seen it happen, you know, you, you're shooting at an animal that's quartering towards you more than you think they are, or the animal ducks, or the animal takes off running, and, and you panic, and you take a, you rush a shot. All of these things can happen to the most seasoned hunter. They've happened to me. And I've spent a lot of time tracking in uh, those tough situations after that. What I think we can do as hunters is just take a breath, take a pause, 
a lot easier said than done a lot of times and not take that shot. Give that animal a second or two, especially if they're on a food source or a water source to kind of turn, maybe give you a better shot. And if they don't give you a good shot, they walk off, you got a good memory, you got a chance to hunt that deer again. But when you take some of those riskier shots, it's it's it can end up being a rough situation. There could be a lot of tracking, lost game uh, sometimes. I mean, all of those can really sour the hunt and sour the situation. They're gonna happen. If you hunt enough, you're gonna wound an animal. If you hunt enough, you're gonna miss one. It's just part of hunting. But it's something we all strive to do better at. We try to avoid. We want that perfect broadside shot. When we don't get it, we want those little variances of it. And then when we can't get any of those at all, chances are we're better off just letting that bow down, putting the safety back on, letting that deer move around. Maybe we get that one this time, maybe we get him next time. But by avoiding that risky shot, we just don't wound as many and the end result's better for the animal and for the hunter.